Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to multi-select items from a Power Apps gallery. We will leverage the checkbox control to allow the user to select multiple items, provide a check all option to select all the items, and allow the user to make modifications to the data for all the selected items in one go by using a single patch function. So let's check this out in action. I have a gallery in my Power App that is connected to a data source. In my scenario, the data source is a very simple SharePoint list. Now to give the user the ability to select multiple items from a gallery, I will go ahead and edit the gallery. And in this gallery, I will go and insert the checkbox control. This checkbox, I'll position it on the left hand side. The text property for the checkbox, I'll set it to empty. The checkbox has a checkbox size property. I will change this to 20. Also, there is a focused border thickness property. I will set to zero. If I preview, you can see each of my gallery items has the option for the user to select the item by using the checkbox. Now, whenever the checkbox is checked, I would like to store the information of that selected record in a collection. So for the on check property of the checkbox, I will write the formula collect to collect data in a collection that I will call call data. And I would like to collect this item, which is the current item that the user selects. Remember, the items of the gallery are coming directly from my connected data source. When the checkbox is unchecked, so on uncheck, I would want to go ahead and remove that item from the collection. Now I am using a SharePoint list as part of my data source. The key aspect to take note of is that every SharePoint list there is a primary key and that in SharePoint is always the ID column. That's the unique identifier for every record. On uncheck, I would like to remove the item from the collection. I'll use the formula remove if from the collection and the condition is the primary key, which is ID, is it equal to this item dot ID. So this will remove the data from the collection if the ID matches the current running ID of the item for the checkbox that I uncheck. So now if I was to preview the app and let's say I make a couple of selections. If I go to variables and look at collections, here is my collection called call data that has two rows and I can view the information in this collection. The two rows in the collection are the two records that I have checked. If I select another one, now my collection has three rows. If I uncheck, this time my collection has one row. Another property of the checkbox control is the default property. And that should depend upon whether the current running items primary key, which in my case ID, is it in that collection. So the formula will be this item dot ID is in my collection dot ID. Now, if you would like to show how many items are currently checked, I'll go ahead and insert a text label control here. I will say selected item count is count rows of the data in the collection. So right now I have one item selected. As I start selecting more items, you can see the count increases. 
and I can go ahead and unselect as well. I also want to give the user the ability to select all items at once. To do that, I will go and insert another checkbox control, position it right here. The text for this, I will call it check all. This checkbox, I will rename to check all. On check of this checkbox, I would like to go ahead and select all the items in the gallery. My gallery items property is my SharePoint list. The formula that I've written on the items property, I will copy this and for my checkbox all on check, I will use the formula clear collect in my collection called call data. And for the item, I will simply put that same formula that I copied from the items property of the gallery. So basically all I'm saying here is go collect all the data from my data source and put it in the collection. On uncheck of the check all checkbox, I would simply go and clear the data in that collection. So let's try this. Check. You can see it's gone ahead and checked all the items in my gallery. Uncheck removes it all. When I select check all, the collection item count says 500. However, if I add another label control here to show the gallery item count, which I can get by pointing to the gallery controls, all items count property. Notice here it says the gallery item count is 100, but the selected item count is 500. Now the reason here is the concept of delegation. When we execute a collect data operation, go collect all the data from the data source, it won't load all the data from my list in this collection. There will be a limit purely because collection is data locally stored in your power app for that user's session. And that limit, if you go to your app settings, that is the data role limit, which is 500. So that's how this 500 came about. And for the gallery item count, which it says 100, because the items property of the gallery is a delegable query against my data source, the query here is get me all the rows from the issue tracking SharePoint list. It's a delegable query. So the gallery will load data in batches of a hundred. Now, if I scroll down to the end of the gallery, the gallery will then go about loading the next set of data in memory. This is optimized loading of data. Next, I want to give the user the ability to modify the properties of the selected items in one go. Now in my SharePoint list, I have various types of columns. I'll focus on two columns here. Status, which is a choice column and priority, which is also a choice column. Now in my app, I will add a couple of drop down controls. The first one, I'll call it DRP status. The items property will be choices of my data source, which is issue tracking list dot my choice column status. So this drop down will load the options for the choices coming from my status column. The second drop down, I will rename to DRP priority. The items property for this will be choices of my SharePoint list dot the column priority. I've added a couple of label controls. Here I'll add a button. The text I've set to update. Now on select of this button, the user can in one go update these two property values for all the selected items. And I would do that by using the patch function 
Now you may be thinking that I would use for all to loop through all the items on the collection and go and update these items one by one. For all runs in a sequential fashion. It would take a performance hit in case of large number of items selected. Here though, the collection that we are creating is being created from the items of my data source. And it also has the primary key information. The patch function allows us to patch a collection directly to a data source as long as the schema matches, which it does in this scenario. So when update is clicked, the first thing I would do is I would update the data in the collection because I want to change the status value and the priority value depending upon what the user has selected in these dropdowns. And to do that, I will use the formula update if my collection, the condition is true, meaning go update all the items of the collection. And here I would like you to go and set the following column values. Status is a choice column. This will be set to drop down status dot selected comma. Priority is a choice column. This will be DRP priority dot select. Close the object, complete the function. Now, once this is done as a next step, all I have to do is use the patch function, patch to my data source, the collection. That's it. One single line, and this will patch all the items in the collection in one go, in one query to the data source. And once this patch is complete, I will go ahead and use the function clear to clear the data in that collection. This is also a good spot to go ahead and reset the checkbox all control. Let's give this a try. I have two items selected. I'm going to change the status of these items to closed. And I will change the priority of these items to low. I'll click update. One query, one go. Both of these items have those properties updated. Let's select more items. As an example here, I've selected 14 items. I'll change the status to in progress, priority high, update. Look at the speed. In one go, it's patched all of that information to my data source. Let's try it with 500 items. Let's change the status of these items to open, priority, medium. I'm trying this live. 500 items are being patched. I'm not going to edit this part of the video. So this will give you a good indication of the speed. There you go. My first 500 items have the status updated to open, and priority is medium. And to confirm, if you look at the backend data source, all those changes are in play. I've added the option here to filter based on priority. This is what my filter condition looks like. Now this items property, copy it, checkbox all, on check where you're collecting data in the collection, Write that same formula here. Make sure that on change of your filters, in my case, on change of my drop down filter, I would like to go ahead and clear the data in my collection. Show me all the high priority items. Let me go ahead and select these five. I'm going to change the priority to low. The status I'll set to closed. Hit update. There we go. Those five items have been updated. And notice if I have items selected and if I change my filtering, it's all cleared again. So I can go and start selecting. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.